Welcome to the Deep Dive, where we aim to cut through the noise and get straight to the insights. Today, we're plunging into the uh, fascinating and sometimes really contradictory world of the Internet Computer Protocol. You probably know it as ICP. So our mission for this deep dive, we've got a whole stack of sources, recent YouTube takes, technical reports from Chainspec dated just yesterday, August 22nd, 2025, market news from Coindesk, invests the lot. We're going to try and unpack the complex picture they paint. You know, ICP's really impressive tech performance, its big scalability claims, but also its recent market swings, its significant security issue, and, well, its long-term potential. That's exactly right. And it's so important we look at ICP with uh, a balanced view. In crypto, you always get hype, but sometimes there's genuinely game-changing tech, too. We'll sift through both. We'll explore those impressive technical achievements ICP is showing off, but also the you know the critical market stuff and the challenges that are really shaping where it's going right now. For you listening, we want to give you that full picture. Okay, so let's unpack this, starting with raw power, mm -hmm. speed, and scalability. It's one of ICP's main selling points, right? This ability to handle transactions like Lightning. Our chain spec data from yesterday, August 22nd, gives us a great comparison with other top blockchains. Uh -huh. What are those numbers actually telling us about ICP in the real world? Yeah, that chain spec data is uh, pretty eye-opening. For the internet computer, the live transactions per second TPS is 171 on the mainnet. But the really staggering part, it's theoretical maximum potentially 29,780 TPS. Wow. And it's not just theory. ICPs already process over 647 million transactions. That's actually the highest volume on that specific comparison list. Shows real use, you know, for AI, DeFi, Web3 stuff. And here's something absolutely critical for any blockchain finality. It's zero seconds for ICP. Zero, like instant. Instant. Transactions are final right away, no risk of them being rolled back. And the block time, how fast new blocks get added, is almost instant too, 0.48 seconds. Okay. Instant finality, huge transaction volume. Yeah. It almost sounds too good to be true in the blockchain space. Usually there are trade-offs, right? So how does that compare to, say, Solana? Everyone talks about Solana's speed. Right. Solana is definitely a big player for speed. It clocks in around 49 live TPS, which you know, isn't worlds away from ICP's live figure. Its theoretical max is listed at 65,000 TPS. Though, interestingly, the source we looked at mentioned this as, quote, way below ICP's 200K plus scalability vision, even if the current measured theoretical max for ICP is that 29,780 figure. Hmm. Okay. But what about the other factors? Well, the real kicker is finality. Solana takes around 12.8 seconds. That's quite a wait compared to ICP's instant. Yeah, 13 seconds versus zero. Exactly. Plus, you have to remember Solana's history. It's had network outages when things get busy, which does make you question its reliability compared to ICP, which has been pretty solid on that front. Okay, so that's Solana. If we just quickly glance at the others on that chain spec list, any other major players stand out in comparison? Well, you see a mix. There's a new one, Sonia. Testnet only, mind you, showing 194 live TPS, which is good for testing. Claims a massive 1.5 million theoretical PPS, instant finality too, but, you know, totally unproven in the real world, like ICP. Then you've got BNB, around 139 live TPS, max 2,222. Stellar's doing okay on live TPS 180, but a lower max and slower block time. Tron, 103 live, but almost a minute for finality. Ouch. Yeah, that's slow. Near looks decent. 58 live TPS, good theoretical max at 16,000, fast block time, but it's operating on a much smaller scale. And the source specifically notes it's not as decentralized as ICP. And Ethereum, the big one. Ethereum's still the king of smart contracts, no doubt. Yeah. But its base layer is just too slow for these kinds of metrics. It relies on layer twos like base. Base hits about 140 live TPS, which is good, but its finality is like... 13 minutes. So not really playing in the same league for instant finality on L1. So what's fascinating here is ICP seems to lead in both live throughput and maximum capacity, handling more actual transactions than Solana and others while keeping that instant finality. No compromises apparent there. And then you look at the market cap disparity. Solana's sitting around, what, $100 billion? ICP is maybe $3 billion? Huge difference. Yeah, you got to do the maths, as they say. It makes ICP a real outlier. It's combining web speeds with that uh, unbreakable blockchain trust seems built for AI, DeFi, Web3 at a truly global scale. That is a staggering point. Such advanced tech, but the valuation. It doesn't seem to match up yet, which makes those recent market swings even more, well, critical to understand, doesn't it? Given that tech power, you'd think the market journey would be smoother, but it hasn't been. Let's pivot to that intense volatility ICP scene just in the past week or so. Absolutely. The market's been uh, pretty rough on ICP lately, really highlights that tension between the tech fundamentals and just broader market feelings, you know. 
In the days leading up to yesterday, August 22nd, ICP's price took a sharp dive. On the 18th, Coindesk and Invest reported a 7% slide. It broke through a key support level at $5.48. And what was really telling, the trading volume. It nearly doubled. That screams large-scale selling. The report suggested institutional selling, maybe even coordinated selling among large investors. Coordinated selling. Wow. What triggered that? Seems like it was mostly linked to wider market jitters after some hotter-than-expected U.S. inflation data came out. The July 2025 Producer Price Index, the PPI, that spooked the markets generally. Okay, so bad inflation data kicks off the dip. Did the selling stop there, or did it get worse before things turned around? Oh, it continued. The next day, August 19th, Coindesk confirmed ICP fell another 2.35%. And those volume surges kept happening, pushing it down near $5.18. Technical analysis at the time, not pretty. Talk of a descending channel pattern, basically trending down. Weak momentum. The RSI indicator was near oversold, suggesting maybe it was due for a bounce, but the vibe was definitely bearish. By yesterday, August 22nd, CoinWorld summed it up. ICP had dropped about 9% since the previous Thursday, performing worse than most other layer ones. Rough few days for sure. But then, bang, a sudden really dramatic shift. Literally today, August 23rd, what on earth flipped the script so fast? Yeah, total turnaround. It was triggered by a huge announcement from the Fed Chair Jerome Powell today. Ah, uh, Powell speaks. Exactly. He stated pretty definitively that there will be a rate cut in September. That's like waving a green flag for the markets. Lower interest rates generally make riskier assets like crypto look more appealing. And the market reacts. Immediate, explosive. Bitcoin shot up thousands of dollars, like five thousand, six thousand dollars. And ICP, it just rocketed, twelve percent surge in a couple of hours, hitting five dollars and fifty cents from just under five dollars. Completely flipped the momentum. And the expectation now is for more cuts, consistent rate cuts, maybe twenty-five, fifty basis points over the next, say, three to nine months. That generally points towards a green market ahead. Okay, that's a significant turnaround driven by macro news. So what does this mean for ICP's price right now? And what about those uh, more exciting long-term predictions we sometimes hear? Well, in the very short term, don't be surprised if there's a slight pullback, maybe back towards the $5.27, $5.25 level. A retest. Exactly. It's a classic support and resistance pullback. Price often checks a level it just broke before heading higher. After that, the expectation is it pushes up again. There's definitely some resistance to watch around $7.10 to $7.30. That could be a hurdle. But some analysts are saying, look, if ICP breaks cleanly above $6, especially if it confirms that growth with a retest, we might not see prices that low again for a while. Depends on its performance in this cycle, of course. And the big numbers. The $100 predictions. Yeah, those are out there. Some analysts are definitely bullish long term, suggesting ICP could reach $100. That'd be, what, roughly a 19x from where it is right now? Seems ambitious. It does, but the argument is interesting. They compare it to Dogecoin's all-time high market cap. ICP at $100 would be about $53.7 billion. That's still $30 billion less than Doge's peak. That puts it in perspective. Right. So for these analysts, that potential 19x looks way more exciting than, say, a potential sub 3x for Bitcoin hitting $300 or Ethereum hitting $10. It's a different risk reward profile. Definitely food for thought. But like we said, the market often feels disconnected from the tech. So with that picture of market volatility and future hopes, let's shift back to what's happening inside ICP, the engine room. Our sources show lots of innovation, but also, crucially, some security challenges that need addressing. Yeah, on the innovation side, things are moving fast. Definity, the foundation behind ICP, just doubled the replicated state capacity to two terabytes. Think of it like massively upgrading the hard drive space for the whole network. It makes it way more capable of hosting big, complex software. That's seen as a major victory, showing a real long-term mindset. And the cost efficiency. We hear a lot about that. The numbers are pretty wild, if the sources are accurate. Allegedly, $1 worth of smart contract data on ICP gets you over 200 million bytes on Ethereum. Around 44 bytes. Massive difference. Huge. And the cost per instruction. Supposedly over 40 million times less expensive than Ethereum. Plus, you've got key projects launching or integrating. Caffeine AI, the self-writing apps platform. The Solana integration we mentioned. And critically, Bitcoin DeFi, which is now really being powered by ICP's unique ability to handle Bitcoin directly. Okay, those are definitely big steps forward, fitting that world computer vision. But uh, no system's perfect. Let's talk about the Odin Fund hack. What stands out to you about that incident? What does it tell us? Yeah, the Odin Fund hack is really important to dissect. It happened on Odin Fund, which is a Bitcoin DeFi app built on ICP. 
Crucially, it wasn't a hack of the core ICP blockchain itself. That's a key distinction. Right, application layer issue. Exactly. But the impact was still significant. The amount of chain key Bitcoin, that's Bitcoin directly secured by ICP's crypto for cross-chain stuff, dropped from 487 BTC to around 430 BTC. So a loss of about 50, 60 BTC. That's roughly $7 million. It definitely raised concerns about the security of apps built on ICP, and it made people ask, you know, should Definity step in, especially since this was a major hub for Bitcoin integration. So a serious challenge. How did the ecosystem respond? Did Definity step in? Well, the response seems pretty proactive, actually. It looks like Definity is stepping in, maybe overseeing Odin Fund's operations or helping them boost security. The fact that Odin Fund is still featured on the new Bitcoin DeFi portal suggests collaboration. And beyond that, ICP is bringing in AI tools, advanced language models that can actually help write and audit smart contract code to find vulnerabilities before they get exploited. Using AI for security. Interesting. Yeah. And what was really surprising and honestly quite positive was the reaction from the Bitcoin community. Oh, how so? Usually, they're pretty skeptical of other chains. Exactly. But even well-known Bitcoin maximalists and NF Tordinals folks, like someone called Udi, were surprisingly supportive. They backed Odin Fund publicly. They acknowledged it was a breach of user trust, sure. But they also emphasized that most funds were safe and the team was working on recovery. It's unexpected cooperation. Totally. And if you connect the dots, this kind of cooperation, especially from the often conservative Bitcoin crowd, is actually pivotal for fostering long-term links between Bitcoin and other smart contract chains. So ironically, this hack, while bad, might actually be a catalyst for positive change. It's forcing ICP to strengthen app security and show its commitment to working with others, building trust in the long run. That's a compelling way to frame it, turning a crisis into an opportunity. Still, we have to acknowledge, not everyone's convinced ICP is out of the woods yet, mm. despite the tech and the recent market bounce. We need the full picture. Absolutely essential. We need to balance the narrative. 99 Bitcoins, for instance, points out that ICP has been in a steady downward trend overall, down over 15% in the last 30 days, even with that caffeine AI launch. They see weak momentum. And CoinWorld highlights some tough comparisons. Over the past year, ICP declined 66.85% against Bitcoin and 62.5% against Ethereum. Oof. Yeah, that shows its vulnerability to macroeconomic trends and market sentiment shifts. It emphasizes that even with strong tech and a recent rebound, ICP still has ground to regain. It needs to build consistent positive market momentum to really align how people see it with what the tech can actually do. So this deep dive has really laid bare this, this split personality almost. On one side, you have truly groundbreaking technology aiming to rebuild the internet. On the other, you've got the harsh realities of market swings, security scares, and wider economic forces. It's uh, quite a complex picture. It really is. And it leaves us with a crucial question, especially for you listening and watching this space. How will the Internet Computer Protocol manage this tension, this pull between its incredible technological speed and the, let's face it, messy realities of market sentiment, getting institutions on board, and fixing third-party security flaws, especially as it talks about onboarding the next billion users and becoming the platform for Bitcoin interoperability? What parts of this whole ambitious, slightly chaotic journey will you be keeping the closest eye on as ICP keeps evolving? It's definitely one to watch. 